Looking at Western today, you'd never guess at the humble beginnings. But Western science was born simply. One small lab and two lecture theaters. Not much, but enough. There was a hunger for knowledge that persists today. In 1918, Helen Battle studied from a converted barn on campus. She went on to become Canada's first female PhD in marine biology. An unheated shed was Garnet Wounton's antenna test facility. Equipment needed to be continually moved, so he towed it about campus on a borrowed child's snow sled. Wounton had set up Western's experimental broadcasting station. His ionosphere research led to the development of radar and was instrumental in the Allied victory. In support of astronomy, the Cronin Observatory opened in 1940, and in 1947, the Natural Science Building was extended. Western was changing and growing and attracting extraordinary people. Garnet Wooten student John Chapman is known today as the father of the Canadian space program. Peter Schultz brought the molecular scanning capabilities of the positron beam to Canada and high quality inspections to the world. Tony Brown was the first to recognize that insects had the genetic ability to adapt to and resist pesticides. The World Health Organization recruited Tony as a senior biologist. Our learning space has evolved to keep pace in a feat of modern imagineering. The latest renovation turned our outside in. The new atrium joins physics and astronomy in the middle. Natural light floods in and ideas flow back and forth as easy as this. I study stars. I study things hitting the atmosphere. I work on disks surrounding massive stars. My research involves looking at very small things. We measure properties of atoms using lasers. From the incredibly small to the impossibly large, eye-opening discoveries often result. The neatest eureka moment probably was right at the beginning of my career. We actually identified a new kind of magnetism in stars. When we were done our process, and we calculated this feature in the light we could get from this star that it matched perfectly. We had very large shivers over Russia. To have a piece of the sky in your hand and say, this came from another planet is very, very motivating for students. They find that a pretty cool thing. I find it pretty cool. Another thing that we're looking at is spider mites. If there's on plants, it creates a nest. We've discovered that the silk that these things produce is about a thousand times thinner than human. But it's also quite strong. We are producing the next generation of solar cells that will be marked at the moment. And with the solar cell, everywhere you want, on any surface you want. That in the future can even be your the window of your office. And that's what we are doing here. Question has a great reputation because it has great people. People who just welcome you to knock on their door and who invite you into their laboratory to participate in research with them. The research activities of the faculty, myself, the astronomers, the material scientists, etc. Any other university, you'd have to wait much longer before you sort of got that experience. The key is that when you study science, you learn about problem solving, and those skills are applicable to a wide range of careers. So you can come here thinking I want to do chemistry, but at the end of four years, something completely different has taken your interest. Different interests, different paths, are as open and fluid as this. Ideas are shared, research pursued, and discoveries made. Every day, new hands grab the torch, and first steps are taken to changing and improving our world once again. It's what we do here and what we've been doing well for 130 years.